Welcome back to Vintage Vinyl, a very special edition of the show. Down here in the basement, Jeffrey Lee Puckett, music writer, Tom Heiser, guy who looks at the internet all day. But we're talking about a, uh, an era. But I'm a- We like to call the 1990s. Yes, this the was not grunge our, era. These were not our formative years. These were not the 80s. No, we, we were adult men. We were adults at this. Well, semi adults. <laughs> so we were semi tough, semi adults at this point. But um, we still had a few tunes that, uh, that still shaped, you know, the way we saw the era. We want to do a survey, doing a survey of the 90s. Yes. So it includes a lot of different music. Uh, this perhaps is the most different. We have a clash of uh, oh. styles in this. In and this and normally episode. clashes would bring us, you know, to the brink of war, to the brink of battling here on here, here in the basement. But not it, it, it's too diverse this week. We're going to touch on so many things that you people out there, that our fan base is going to say, huh, what? <laughs> but to I'm, that point, to that point, I'm going to kick. <laughs> I'm going to kick it off with a very diverse. And I can. I will say, as I as, as I mentioned before, there's a lot to hate on my list, but I can. I can defend anyone to the team. All right. All, all right. right. So I'm going to kick it off at number 10 with Sting from and Fields you of Gold. You cannot defend that. I can defend it. I can defend it because it's a beautiful song, and I, I love Sting's solo work. I really did. Yes, you're, I did. You're the one. Yes, I did. <laughs> ah, you've, you've been waiting a lot of shows to say that. All right. And number 10, I'm going with Gerardo and Rico Suave. Don't give me any trouble Is over this one. everything going to be number 10? Because, because you know. <laughs> Back in your in your area, and then in the old Dixie Highway area, you cruising around. Don't tell me you didn't have a turtleneck and a gold chain listening to two songs on the tape, which was We Want the Funk and Rico Suave. I can guarantee this, that did not this, happen. Because, uh, Gerardo ushered in a whole era of real cheesy rap. A buddy of mine and I used to listen to it a lot, so there you go. You were, number eight. You were a bro. <laughs> number eight. I, well, you've obviously taken your 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 sartorial um, uh, decisions from my number eight from Nirvana, <laughs> yep. and uh, "Come As You Are," which I think is the best song that they ever that they ever. It's put my out. favorite song. It's it, it's great. Yeah. Number seven. I'm going with "Cannonball" by the Breeders. That's Only, a good choice. I love that hook. Do, do, that, that is, is a, a good great, choice. great uh, uh, baseline hook. I absolutely love that. Nicely done. And at number six, I'm Finally. going with a fantastic song. I'm going with Man in the Box by Alice in Chains. I think that they were, other than Nirvana, one of the best of the of the uh, uh, grunge bands. I'd agree uh, with the, that. Uh, and just, just a great rock band. That's and, actually a band that... In the music community as a whole, they've grown in stature over the years. And and that song really kicked it off. I wanted one quick toss out though to a song that nearly made my list, which was "Been Caught Stealing" by Jane's Addiction. I wanted to fit it in there somehow, just couldn't do it. Do, so do, do, glad do, do, you do, didn't. Do 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 do. do, do. Okay. Well, the '90s for me were not very grungy, despite the flannel. Despite it, okay, flannel yeah, all flannel. yeah, right. All evidence to the contrary. The '90s for me was the emergence of indie rock. On the on the music scene, and I really, really uh, was energized by that. Um, I'd spent a lot of years doing, you know, just classic rock and roll, <clears throat> a lot of singer songwriters. Yes. And then it just felt like this exciting movement was going on, and I really got into it. And that's and my list is going to reflect that. It's Ten through six. My favorite band from the '90s, Guided by Voices. Motor Away. Motor Away is a song you would love if I could ever sit, get you to sit down I would, and listen if you're, to it. If you're, if you're giving testimony to it, I would do it. Number nine, The Flaming Lips, still going strong today. A spoonful weighs a ton from their great soft bulletin album. Red Right Hand, the most well-known Nick Cave song. Maybe it was the, no, Right Hand, yeah. Other Right. <laughs> wow, I've never seen you this demonstrative. Red Right Hand is wow. just a great song. It's in a lot of movies still for some reason. Number seven is a Springsteen song because I got to get Bruce into any he, era. He had some. He had some good stuff in the night. Yeah, if I should fall behind. Okay. A great wedding song. Okay. Number six, uh, a great uh, Chicago band named Helium. It's a, a song called XXX. It's not about the pornography industry. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the the great Mary Timoney was the singer songwriter. 
uh, guitarist, bass player, whatever. She was, uh, she was a lost treasure, I believe, of that era. Yeah, so pretty weird top. Wow, top can, can our six through tens be any different? No. No, they can't. And no. I don't think five through, one through five is going to be any different. <laughs> Probably not. I'm going to kick it off with a, a standard that may seem too, too easy, too obvious, but all I want to do from Sheryl Crow, it introduced Sheryl Crow. I love Sheryl Crow, and I can say that I had a crush on Sheryl Crow when this song came out. Yeah. She was hot. She, I had a this crush came on out, her, too, but I didn't listen to her music. I, <laughs> do I, so this is putting me in a position of really having to defend my choice. I think this, first of all, it brought back my fa one of my favorite sounds, which was that kind of California country, you know, with the slide guitar, kind of that Buck Owens kind of sound. It brought yeah. that back. It brought back kind of a folky lyric to it. You know, anybody that says, I like a good beer buzz early in the morning, that's going to get me listening right there. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think Cheryl, you know, uh, if it makes you happy, obviously is you know was a great song by her from that period. I, there's just something about the song that really caught me when it first came out. I really loved it. I I thought she was fantastic as a singer songwriter. All I want to do is have some fun. Just, just kind of resonates with me. I saw her on that tour. She was opening for, um, I think, Lucinda Williams. Okay, that sounds about right. It was a right. very small venue, mm -hmm. and she was about eight feet away from me. She was pretty cute in person, I got to say. Okay. So I lived your dream. You lived my dream yeah. of sitting there and, and, and just going like this? <laughs> I did not do okay, that. Okay, you didn't do that. All right. My number five is one of my favorite songs from the entire era. It's Afghan Wigs, a band from Cincinnati. They used to come down and play uh, in Louisville all the time. Uh, they were never got to be superstars, but Crime Scene Part One is just this epic song about uh, grim romance. That was uh, Greg Dooley, the, the songwriter. That was his, uh, his big obsession was about uh, love gone wrong and all the betrayals and stuff. It's it's just uh, a song that still gets me charged up. I'll, anything is going to get us charged up. And number four charges me up. Oasis and Wonderwall. Okay, fine. It was, it's one of their biggest hits of the nine, of the, of the era. It's, it's, it's their, one of their signature songs. But I absolutely love this song. And I love I, it. I have no problem. I have no, okay. But there's another reason I love this song. I love it because of what Oasis represents, which is bad boys. I mean, these guys, <clears throat> these guys couldn't conduct a coherent interview. <laughs> Without hitting each other. Without hitting each other. The, 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 the Manchester accents were thick. Yes. The, uh, this, is not, this is not what's her name from Frasier. This is a real thick Manchester yeah. accent. These are two brothers who couldn't stand each other. These are guys arguing on stage. The, they are the epitome of bad boy British rock and roll. And, you know, you're my wonder wall. I love it. I'm I think a big it's, Oasis fan. Too. I, more than anything that they churned out, I, I think this was this was just a fantastic tune. I like their arrogance. A lot of people yes. were turned off by their arrogance. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, I we, think there was a little bit. They tweaked it, I think, just to irritate people. I didn't take them 100% seriously. When they would say things like, we're going to be as good as the Beatles. No, and We're already no. better than the Stones and all that kind of stuff. No, you know? but, but these, you know, these, these guys are, you know, from, you know, from, the, uh, from, from the lower ends of Manchester. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they, can, they can say whatever they want. Like you said, they, they tweaked the music industry and, you know, crowds turned out in mass. Oh, yeah. In mass. My number four is from Pavement. Pavement was a band that uh, probably defined the indie rock movement a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, their first uh, 
widespread release was Slanted and Enchanted, and Summer Babe was the uh, single. I don't know if indie bands technically had singles back then, but it was, <laughs> it was the song that, uh, that was the gateway drug for a lot of people. In the house boats, I will wait there. Really loose and crazy and weird, but at its heart, a complete summer pop song, but just sort of on codeine. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, as this show has been described at that time. <laughs> and indie bands lead me into number three, which I, a band I loved at the time and, and still find myself listening to every now and then, Billy Corgan and Smashing Pumpkins with 1979. I thought this was... There were, not only the hook, I love the beginning lyrics to that. Uh, I, I, I love the you know the, the the opening guitar. Shake down nineteen seventy nine. Oh, I love that, and I and I just think that. That it, it it almost has this kind of like operatic progression, you know, as the song gets bigger and bigger. And of all the things that they turned out, I, this is the one that that really kind of stuck with me. And I've always thought um, defines, if you want to say, we can call them indie rock. At the oh, time, yeah. at the time, they went from indie to uh, global pretty yes, fast. Yes, pretty fast. They definitely but, started. But at this, but at that moment, yeah. I thought that the, you know this was a uh, pretty hot song. My number three is from uh, my favorite hometown band. One of my favorite bands, period, but they're also from my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, My Morning Jacket, Tom's uh, least favorite band. My Morning Headache, as I like to call them, <laughs> because Mr. Because JLP here will not give me a break when it comes to driving this band's playbook down my throat at any given at any given moment. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, Tom Eisenberg. Okay. You're okay. going to wake up to the obvious one day. But I took uh, The Bear, which is a track from uh, their debut album, Tennessee Fire. Barely made it into the 90s, came out in 1999. Uh, still a song that pops up in their playlist to this day. Um, it's, a, it's just a beautiful distillation of their, of their early sound. Uh, just go to number two. Just go to number two. two. I will, you know what? Yes, you're absolutely <laughs> correct. Number two, I'm going with The Cure with Friday I'm in Love. And, you know, That's this a is a catchy song. It is a catchy song, but, you know, the, the Cure is a band that I loved in the 80s. And I love them because I actually didn't even know who they were <laughs> before I was doing the best I could to impress a goth chick. And by pretending to like The Cure, <laughs> I had to start listening to The uh. Cure. And it was at that point that I said, man, these guys are pretty darn good. Yeah, that's you, nice. Going to the Vogue, you watch, I saw, you know, see the movie on the big screen. And then you, I, and I, stopped, I never put the eyeliner on. Then you and stopped it, with her and just started. I, I just started listening just to going the Cure, to Cure show. <laughs> and then a lo lot of a lot of my buddies in Germany, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of femme fatales were always big fans of, of the Cure. I never had to tease yeah. my hair out, but 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 you know, uh, but this but, but the return of the Cure with with Friday I'm in Love. Uh, it, 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 it's just a great song. It's catchy, it's poppy, but at the same time it's got, I, I would say, some, some very, uh, I don't want to say, uh, intellectual lyrics. But no, at the same day, it's, it's a love thought. song. It, yeah. It's definitely an offbeat kind of love song. He put some thought into it. He lyrics. definitely put some thought into it. I just, I'm still just don't hoping you, for a picture of you and wait and make up and full makeup. It's Friday. I'm in love. I just want to see it. You just want to see it. No, I, I never it. had to do that. But at the same time, I kind of I played the role in order to in order to um, make myself just that much more attractive. You know, uh, the Cure singer, Robert Smith, he still dresses exactly like that. He looked really, really bad the last time I saw him yeah. dress like that and do a live performance. 
Well, the dude's giant. He's, he's, oh, he's like two hundred. He's like six foot five and two hundred and eighty pounds. Oh yeah, he's huge. Yeah, he he he's not uh, he's not aged well. I would. Say. <laughs> Unlike us. Exactly. My number two. Uh, this is my Oasis moment from the same album. What's the story, Morning Glory? I'm going with Don't Look Back in Anger. It's just uh, although I love a lot of that album, for some reason I I tend to when I pop in. Uh, a CD of this in the car, I tend to jump right to Don't Look Back in Anger and get that out of my system. Okay. And then start over. Step outside for summertime. Stand up beside the fireplace. Take that look from off your face. You ain't never gonna burn my heart First of all, the, the title is fantastic. It goes back to an old you know, British stage play from the 60s. Yeah. It, it is definitively British. But yes, and I'm sure that's why they... Yeah, but, and it, but it's fantastic. I, I agree. Uh, if you're, I think you and I could easily alternate uh, our Oasis picks. You know, I did a phone interview with Noel Gallagher uh, last year. It was everything I could have hoped for. Did you, need a tr did you get a translator? There were a lot of quotes that did not get used. That would be fun to have him on the show. So it if was. You're, if you're he watching. Was, he was great. He was really chatty. I was. Oh, was <laughs> that? was more like that. Well, I was kind of scared going in because I was intimidated by him. <laughs> yeah. But he was completely friendly. We talked. Uh, I even pretend like you at the girl. I pretended to know a little bit about uh, soccer. Yeah, or, oh, there or we go. Football. So I could get the conversation rolling. It, Sweet. It really didn't work out that well. What's your number one? Uh, number there? one, I'm going with a, with some so three guys that I have loved for a long time, and that they made a splash once again in the '90s after really hitting homes with some great stuff in the '80s. The Beastie Boys. Nice. The Beastie okay. Boys was sabotage. That's a yes. good one. Yeah. <laughs> I know you planned it. I know you planned it. <laughs> I've said it straight this water gate. Oh, set it straight, this water gate. Oh. You look like you're having a seizure. Hey, it is fantastic. Well, the song sounds like a seizure. The whole beginning <laughs> of the song. I mean, you're not going to get a better a better primal scream, you know, at the beginning. And plus, uh, you know, I hate to throw this in, but yeah, it is one of the greatest videos yes. of the 90s. That kind of cheesy L.A. cop show, yep. Bobby the Rookie and Cochise, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it's just all around terrific. The Beastie Boys... Only did a couple of really good things in the 90s. I want to say that with Sabotage, they followed up with the Ultraman uh, video with Intergalactic, which was actually a, another yeah. really good techno song for them. Yeah. But uh, Sabotage is kind of gritty, kind of dirty. Uh, it's, it's not licensed to ill. It's, it's, it's not Brass Monkey, no. but at the same time, uh, I, I, I absolutely love that song. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was actually on, on my top 20 songs that might have made the top 10, it was in there. Nice. So I have to agree with you there. I'm going to close it like I begun it. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> once guided, again, with, with once again, ripping the dictionary. All <laughs> with Guided by Voices. Uh, the band, I went to see a bunch in the 90s. Uh, they re reunited a few years ago, went to see them again. Um, this is a song from their uh, 1992 album, Propeller. Over the Neptune, Mesh Gear Fox. It encapsulates everything that's great about this band. It's very garagey, it's very proggy, and it's all completely homemade. Because they actually did record in a, in a garage and in just crappy little studios, direct to low rent tape machines, but they felt like they were rock stars. You know, and, that is, that, that is the perfect, garagey and proggy. Those are two adjectives that, if you can use that to describe your favorite band, they deserve to be on the top yep. of the list. Well, and this song especially has has uh, a whole spread where it goes from uh, just low key to this crazy prog rock section to this huge rock and roll finish that is just so exciting. It's a great tune. I'm a
We'll go out and play it uh, right after the show. We'll, we'll have to drink a lot of Budweiser's first because oh, that's kind of a prerequisite. If that's what it takes, brother. That's what it takes. <laughs> you're, you're behind it. <laughs> All right. If you lived through the 90s. If you made it. If you made it out alive, take a look at our list and then give us your thoughts about your list. You can post your list at our Facebook page, which is uh, CJ Vinyl, but it's called Vintage Vinyl, but mm -hmm. look for CJ Vinyl. And put your list up. Um, take it easy on poor Tom here. He's got Rico Suave on his list. <laughs> we want the funk. Try, I could have put that on there. Try not to do any, <laughs> any permanent damage to him with your comments. <laughs> Rico Suave. <laughs> <laughs> There's my mom. All right, baby. All right. We had some tussles in the 90s, her and I. Yeah, mom. <laughs> you know what else happened in the 90s? What? Kids moved out. Uh, grandchildren. Oh. Uh, got jobs. Here comes a big hint. Boom, just dropping right on you. <laughs> you know, time and time again, we have this talk. And time and time again, I slip a few Xanax into your soup, and you doze off and forget we ever had it. That's going to happen this time. If you want to move, if you want to find a nice girl to move out to, you got to, you got to, you got to look her in the eye and say, "I don't care if Monday's blue, Tuesday's gray, and yeah. Wednesday too." Because it worked for you so well. I don't care. Thanks about for joining you. us here in the 1990s Friday, edition of Image Vinyl. Come back next week for a whole new era of music conversation. 